2007, 2008, um, we actually called it back then the campus model. So we were hiring university graduates and the campus model implied they would have, they would have their laptop of choice or their preference for their computing device. And it wasn't a, it wasn't a mobile device then, um, not that many years ago. It was a, it was a laptop PC. And so we had envisioned a model where uh, new employees would just connect to the network and we would somehow control the security and the standardization and the support. But obviously what happened in retrospect is the, you know, the ship share of smartphones really, you know, was catching up with the PC. So overnight we found ourselves in a conundrum where we needed to implement the BYOD model with the uh, smartphone, smart devices and pads uh, out in front of, actually out in front of the laptops. So we still standardize on you know, a Wintel, uh, Dell standard laptop inside the company, but we've opened up uh, to a democratic choice and in effect have, uh, so to some extent, divested the uh, device investment to, to the employee. So prior to, um, to this change, prior to 2009, uh, there were two job roles in the company that we articulated the standard. Uh, sales and service uh, folks who were customer facing had a company provided uh, phone. Uh, and it was pretty, pretty standard. If you were a, a field engineer, you had a BlackBerry, we had a custom app, you could service the customer, uh, take, take down your details of the service incident and get dispatched to the next call as you went out and you know, repaired or replenished cash in ATMs or re repaired point of sale or retail devices. Uh, in the sales space, we articulated a BlackBerry standard. So we had roughly, uh, let's say, 40% you know, of the employees in that time on a company plan and the rest of the employees were just basically told you know, you can use your phone, we can call you for support, but beyond that, we're not providing a service. We opened that up uh, around about uh, late 2008, early 2009, and at that time, we said, well, we'll, put, we'll support two. We'll support a Bez email and a, and a Microsoft Exchange email. We thought that was state-of-the-art then. We had two email servers, and we thought everybody would be happy. You know, two years later, I think we probably support uh, well north of 15 devices and OSs, and the way we made that work was we embraced this notion of a self-service I guess I've got to get off the intro slide here. The balance that we're talking about is um, on the left-hand side, uh, balancing the needs of the, the consumer who's also an employee, or the employee who has a consumer mindset on the left side, with the, um, the CIO interests on the right side and maintaining security and enterprise support and, and risk. And um, we probably could have drawn this pendulum swinging the other way because to me it feels like the weight is certainly on the left-hand side, uh, outweighing the right-hand side. In, in today's environment in terms of what we feel as, as pressure to support uh, uh, the demand for uh, freedom of the device. So with the happy medium we sort of found was 60% of our employees now have a smartphone. Of those 60% um, that they have a choice, uh, they're picking the uh, iPhone or they're picking the Android generally and the other 40% are falling out of their category uh, with a range of devices, you know, whether it's Symbion or MS Mobile or or what have you. Uh, there's a whole plethora of other niche devices there. We, we just require two things, and that's that we can, um, we can encrypt the data and that um, uh, we can remotely wipe in the case the device gets stolen or lost. So those are the two basic premise. Beyond that, the employee comes to a website, they sign up, and then we actually guide them on um, who the service providers are, whether it's AT&T or Verizon or, or Sprint, we, we don't really care. We get in there and help you know, with, with employee discounts, but beyond that, uh, the employee manages the device. So we have, in effect, you know, divested the overall device management issue while still maintaining a balance of, of uh, security and IP. And that, that's, that's turned out to be a sort of a happy medium uh, for us. Uh, we maintain an innovation council whereby employees both from IT and the business, you know, sit down and, and bring ideas for applications to, to the forefront. Most of the applications, obviously, on the left side are, are Apple or Android apps um, nowadays. We, don't get, we do not get in the business of, you know, recommending or articulating those apps. Uh, as far as basic services, uh, we do provide, you know, basic email, uh, file share. So Dropbox-like capability. I'm one of those CIOs that gets paranoid and nervous about the company's IP going out to some private cloud that I don't know. I don't, haven't met the private cloud provider and don't have, you know, contracts necessarily with these public clouds, so I get very concerned. So right out of the gate, we wanted to provide, uh, you know, a store capability, a, a Dropbox-like capability, if you will, inside our internal cloud and make that readily available to, to folks who were uh, embracing the pads and the phone. So that, that was a uh, high priority 
um, for us in basic file sharing. And so that's, that's kind of short and sweet, the way it works for us. Um, you know, on the, on the right-hand side, you know, we mentioned that there are some specific job roles where we do articulate the platform. In the case of our field engineers, we use the BlackBerry. And it was actually a month ago this week. I'm sure many of you in the room were, were impacted by the outage. Um, for us, that was, a, that was about a two- to three-day outage. We, we depend on the... Uh, the mobile data service part of the BlackBerry plan. And it was interesting in the bring up order after BlackBerry had, had their, their failure and brought things back up in your typical DR bring up scenario that enterprise email got higher priority in the bring up sequence than did the MDS and the browsing capabilities. So for those of us who built apps around those APIs in the browsing, we, we were last in line to get our mission critical apps up. So that was, that was a bit of a learning as it relates to diversity on the back end, again on that, that right hand side. So, um, many of us are, are making plans now to, to figure out other, you know, other DR alternative, alternative scenarios so that we don't have that again. So that's, that's sort of my, um, my, my case study, if you will, um, in, into the journey and just thought I'd share that as, as part of my talk track.